Hello everyone and welcome to the Snuggly Monkey Weekly Live. Um, this week we're doing a combination of uh, what's new and unboxing. Um, September is typically a really kind of one of the slower months around the shop. Um, everybody's small business kind of has different cycles and historically for me September tends to be slower right before everything ramps up for the holidays. So I spend September um, purchasing a lot of stock to get ready for the holiday season and all of that has started arriving. So there are tons and tons of boxes all around me here um, to show you and I wanted to talk about a couple of the new arrivals um, that have been super popular um, before they all are sold out again. I wanted to show you um, some of these things. So uh, while we wait for a few more folks to log on, a couple of quick shop, shop updates. Um, we have our September Open Studio is happening next week on Saturday, September 16th. Um, open Studio Days are the days when I open this space up like a regular retail space. Uh, we're open from 10 to 4 and you're welcome to come in, shop in person, um, and it's just kind of like a regular shop. Um, the only exception is that because this is really a working studio, this is where we run all of the online shops from. Um, there's no prices on anything um, and we are cash only, but if you are in the Durham area um, next weekend, then uh, please feel free to stop by. We'd love to see you. Um, classes are starting this weekend. So this Saturday I'll be teaching Sashiko 101. Um, I've got three sessions of Sashiko 101 happening this fall and then one session of Sashiko 102, which is the Hitome Zashi class and one session of um, Sashiko 103, which is the Kuguri Sashi or the Stitch and Weave um, class. And then um, I will be taking a break from teaching until fall of 2024. Um, so if you had been wanting to take one of these Sashiko classes, um, head over to the snugglymonkey.com and look under our classes section um, and you can register there. All right, so let's jump into some of the um, new items first. So a couple of weeks ago, um, I debuted the Trailhead Yarns Tensile Thread. Within a couple of hours of the newsletter announcing these going out, everything I had sold out. So I'm really, really glad that you all um, are enjoying these threads. Um, I think they're beautiful. I actually learned about Trailhead Yarns probably about two years ago, and I've been wanting to add them to the shop for a while. I met them um, at H&H &H back in June. They're lovely, lovely people. Um, and I was able to see all the thread and all the projects that they've made with them. And I was convinced that I needed to add them to the shop. So um, I've started out uh, with adding their thread collections. These are their thread rings, which include 25 um, bobbins of their tensile thread. And then I also have some of their um, acorn caches which are these smaller boxes that have five threads in them. So if you're not familiar with tensile thread, tensile is a fiber that is made from sustainably sourced wood pulp, specifically of eucalyptus trees. Um, Trailhead is uh, based in Canada, which is where they hand dye all of their threads. They get their thread sourced from Germany. Um, and sustainability and um, eco-friendly packaging is really, really important to them, which I really appreciate. So all of their threads are packaged on these aluminum bobbins that you can um, reuse over and over again. Um, and so they're just really conscious of all of their packaging, which I really appreciate. So the first time that I ran across Tencel was when I was taking a floor loom class. Um, and so this is not uh, something that I made myself. I bought this from a weaver, but this is a, a tensile wrap. Um, so tensile is really popular in weaving because it is very soft, it's very durable, it has beautiful drape, and it has this really bright sheen. So all of those features are in the tensile thread. Super soft, very durable, and the colors are just so vibrant. Um, and bright. So with the restock, I got uh, some of the, almost all of the colors that were in the first round. And then I also got some new collections like the Glacier and the Field of Flowers. Um, so there's just loads and loads of colors now for you to choose from. Um, going forward, they do sell the, their thread in individual bobbins, like in a case. 
Um, so I'm just kind of trying to determine how much folks like it, whether or not to stock all of their colors because they have hundreds and hundreds of them. Um, so for now, we're going to stick with the color collections. Let me know what you think of it. Um, so when I was at their booth at H&H, &H, some of the projects that they used uh, their thread, obviously hand embroidery, um, but they used it for, they had a sashiko sampler pillow that they had done, which was beautiful. Um, so it's not the traditional, obviously sashiko thread has a matte finish, doesn't have a sheen to it. This is very shiny, so it was a really different look, but it was a, they had a, it was a navy sampler, um, and all of their threads are hand dyed, so you've got that kind of natural variegation to it. Um, and so it looked really, really pretty. It was really different from a lot of sashiko that I've seen. They um, used it for hand quilting, applique, um, so it's a really versatile thread that you can use kind of in all sorts of different applications um, and it's back in stock. So if you missed out on the first round and wanted to um, grab some, we've got uh, lots more in stock. So head on over. If you search for Tencel, T-E-N-C-E-L, um, you'll be able to see all of the colors or the company is called Trailhead Yarns. So let me put these off to the side. So the other um, kind of big new arrival recently is um, the new train cases from Della Q. Um, again, this is another uh, company that I met up at H&H &H that I had been looking at for a long time and getting to see them and touch them in person. Um, was the convincing factor that I wanted to add them to the shop. So these are their storage boxes based on vintage train cases, um, so you get kind of a sense of size. The, um, they come with two different handle options. So I have it mine set up with um, the little handles. Good morning, thank you for joining me. Um, it also comes with a shoulder strap so that you can attach it at this buckle and at this buckle and then carry it on your shoulder. Um, so the train case, um, my shop assistant Erica is watching and she says they're gorgeous in person. She is absolutely right, they are gorgeous in person. <laughs> um, so this is the teal color. Um, they have all metal brass um, uh, fixtures on them, not fixtures, what is this? Uh, bag hardware. Um, there's little brass feet if you don't like setting your bags on the floor. So they designed these for knitters. Um, they have the little yarn feed uh, pockets here on the side. So your uh, knitters and crocheters, you can put your um, yarn on the bottom, feed it through here, and same like a, uh, what's that called? Like a knitting bowl or something. Um, so it works that way. But I'm not a knitter. Um, I was able to use this and fill this up with all of my sashiko uh, embroidery and some of my uh, crochet amigurumi projects are in here. So I'll show you what I have. Um, Yes, it is absolutely beautiful. I love these cases. So the first cool feature is that this top uh, lid is magnetic. So using needle minders and some included magnets, um, I've attached all of my patterns um, up here to the top. You, you can also see I've got some scissors up here. This is like a velvet, really soft velvet interior. Um, and so some of the embroidery floss that I divided down for one of the hoops I'm working on, it actually sticks to the velvet <laughs> really nice. So it kind of helps keep all of my supplies that I'm using quickly um, right here on the lid, which is really nice. So it has two parts. It has this uh, removable top lid uh, where I have one of my Sashiko projects. I've got some thread conditioner. Um, I've got some embroidery floss. And then in the bottom is quite spacious. Um, and I've got several different projects going on in here. I've got um, some of my crochet hooks. This is one of the woobles that I'm working on right now. It's the dragon, even though he kind of looks like Grimace at the moment. Um, what else? I've got my embroidery stitch kit is down here. Um, and then just some extra, I've got some extra yarn um, and such for the um, crochet projects that I'm working on. So it's quite spacious. Um, it fits up to, the bottom section here can fit up to about a five inch hoop fairly comfortably. Um, on laying flat on the diagonal, you can get a six inch hoop in there. Um, so it does fit embroidery hoops. It's great for Sashiko projects. And like I said, they really um, built this with knitters and crocheters uh, in mind because you can feed your thread through these little side bits here. 
um, which could also work for if you are like um, hand quilting using a ball of pearl cotton you can do that leave your ball inside the case and then feed the um, the thread out through the side and it keeps it contained so it doesn't go rolling all over the place so these are the uh, train cases the company is called Della Q D-E-L-L-A capital Q um, let's put Grimace back in here and uh, the, I have them in five different colors the um, indigo sold out pretty quickly which was the dark blue but I still have them in teal maroon plum um, and I think the sage is also sold out at the moment so going along with the train cases there are the makers buddy cases so these are small um, little tool cases that are meant to coordinate they come in the same colors as the train case same style same uh, bag hardware and they are magnetized on both sides of uh, the interior of the case so um, this is and these you don't need any magnets the magnets are in here so your metal um, tools will go ahead and adhere to the sides of the case just all on their own so I've got some needles in here I've got um, a pair of scissors and it stays nice and secure with the snap closure so these are also really cute these I have in the same exact colors as the train cases so if you wanted to coordinate have them in the same colors you can do that um, or you can have two different colors so these this is one of the other um, really popular recent new arrivals um, and there is just lots and lots of great new stuff that is arriving for the holidays so let's start jumping into unboxing some of these boxes that have um, arrived um, Erica last worked on Tuesday and so she's not quite aware of all of the boxes that are waiting for her when she comes in um, later on this morning but there we've gotten a uh, big restock first one is from drop cloth samplers I was running low on several of the samplers uh, Rebecca taught two classes with snuggly monkey this summer um, she did a Milky Way class and a rainbow yo-yo sampler um, and so all of those are in this box so all of the um, samplers that had been out of stock are now back in stock so if you're not familiar with drop cloth samplers um, Rebecca Rehnquist is the artist behind these embroidery samplers and what you get in here is a pre-printed uh, sampler so a lot of the samplers already have some color on the sampler that's printed on there and so you're kind of stitching with that there are no stitch guides in here there's no threads there's no supplies other than your pre-printed sampler so if you are a person that really enjoys kind of letting your creativity um, loose using all different kinds of threads um, and you don't need the guidance of a, of a specific set of instructions um, or you have a different stitch guide, one of the online ones, a book version that you like to use, drop cloth samplers are fantastic. Um, they're some of my favorite embroidery samplers to work on, but what I love about them is that they really lend themselves really well to using different kinds of thread, so you're not just tied to embroidery floss. Um, I've done drop cloth samplers using sashiko thread, pearl cotton, um, embroidery floss, I am um, looking at doing one in the new trailhead yarns because um, I want to test those out a bit more. So her samplers are kind of a mix between, she's got a series of um, kind of these learning samplers where you get to practice different stitches um, and she's got some project based ones like the needle book, um, there's some Christmas ornaments, um, all that kind of stuff. So we've got a really nice good restock of the drop pot samplers that just got here. Um, all of these, uh, everything that I'm showing you has already been um, checked in, so all of this stuff is live on the website. You don't have to wait for any of this. The next box comes from Maison Sajou out in Paris. Um, France has usually takes August off, uh, and so I'm not able to get things from my French distributors in August, but they're back, so I was able to get a good restock um, from them. So we've got everything in here from, these are their uh, milliner needle, packs their packs are really cute um, they put a lot of thought into their packaging and their designs um, and then you have their needles are uh, kind of in here on this little ribbon so we've got uh, lots of needles from them we've got some of their dressmaker pins the dog and cat and the little girl with the cat which is um, super popular we've got some of their um, floss bobbins these are made of very thick cardstock 
Um, and so they come in different designs um, that are, you can kind of find throughout all of the um, Maison Seju um, packaging. Um, I've got, these are their um, Art Nouveau ladies. I've got bicycles and butterflies and um, colorful vintage bobbins and all sorts of things. So lots of the bobbins are in here. And then um, this is, I was able to get um, their wooden haberdashery items are very popular and we are, as stockists, we're limited in how many we can order at a time. Um, and so this is their wooden needle and pin box, um, which is very popular and I'm only able to get about four of them whenever I place an order. So I have my four, <laughs> they're back in stock at the moment. Um, and what these are, they're just beautifully crafted. Um, they, are, they work with a gentleman who is a master woodworker um, outside of Paris and he makes these for them. Um, so they're really beautifully made. Um, and so you have, um, in French, you've got pins and needles written here. And what it is is just, uh, these are little hinged lids so you can store your pins and needles in here. So it's just a really sweet little wooden storage case. Um, <clears throat> so at the moment, there are four of them. <laughs> um, and like I said, they tend to be fairly popular um, and I get as many as I can whenever I can. Um, but there you go. So that is the box from Maison Saju. All right. So the next box here is um, huge and it's kind of a mix of all sorts of things. We've got um, some of the Cosmo Hidamari thread. The Cosmo thread is a medium weight um, sashiko thread. It comes uh, wound on these cute little cones. So you don't need to turn these into um, thread braids or anything to use them. You just pull off the length of thread that you want to use. Um, and uh, so that's a good restock of those. What else do we have in here? We've got, um, we have a couple of the Kakehari clamps. So <clears throat> this set of clamps, <laughs> if you're not familiar with the Kakehari, it is a, um, a tool that is used in Sashigo, but it's actually a, a really old tool from the 1800s um, that is known as a sewing bird um, here, uh, kind of in the United States and Europe, or a third hand. Um, and what it does is it puts tension on your fabric when you're stitching in hand, uh, where you so you don't have to um, use your hands to create that tension. This kind of handy tool does it for you. I've carried them for years. I just got the updated price list from Tulip um, because, like everything else, they're raising their prices, and uh, I was pretty shocked to see that uh, their kakehari sets are um, almost tripling in price. So. I'm not sure that I'm going to be continuing to stock them because um, the new price makes them very, very expensive. So what is in the shop right now um, is staying at the same prices that it has been. Um, and I'm going to have to have a think about uh, whether or not I restock them at the new prices. So if you have been waiting on a Kakehari, um, the clamps have been out of stock for a little while. I've got five of them um, here. So the clamp um, and the Kakehari itself are both in stock. Um, you might want to grab one because, like I said, they, for some reason, um, they have just gone up in price tremendously. It's one of the biggest price hikes I've seen. Um, you've got the Sashiko um, Handy Pocket Guide, which um, is just kind of, it gives you a little bit of the history of Sashiko. It has some um, patterns here in the back. Um, so lots of folks, this is a very popular item in the shop. Um, lots of folks just have it as kind of a, a quick reference uh, we've got some of the um, Chakopa uh, marking pens. These are water erased marking pens from Japan. They produce a really nice, fine, thin, light blue line. Um, I've used this for years and years and years. I really, really like it. Uh, we've got um, lots and lots of Cosmo floss is in here. Um, these are, it's both to restock the cabinet and we're also restocking some of our thread sets, um, including the color wheel. So there, like I said, there is just tons and tons of stuff um, in this box, uh, but that kind of gives you an overview of what is in here. All right. Next up, we've got some uh, embroidery hoops. So this first box, uh, we've got some of the Morgan hoops, um, the seven inch and the five inch size. Morgan hoops are uh, very popular uh, with um, 
oh my goodness, my brain just blanked. Um, needle, not needlepoint. It'll come to me in a second. Anyway, <laughs> um, they hold your fabric tension super duper duper tight. So if you are um, a person that likes having very tight, tight fabric, drum tight, and that won't move while you're stitching, the Morgan hoops are great for that. Um, similar to the Eversone hoop uh, that I love, it has this system where the inner hoop has a channel and the outer hoop has a ridge. They interlock and they lock your fabric in place. So while you're stitching, it will not move. Um, so we've got uh, some of those. And then we've got our wooden embroidery hoops. So recently, um, these were made by F.A. Edmonds um, for the longest time, and they had their barcode as a sticker on the side. Folks complained about that for years because the glue that they used to put that barcode sticker on here was really hard to get off. And so if you're wanting to use your hoop as a display or a gift, um, you had this kind of sticker residue on the outside. They listened um, and they have repackaged them so that now the barcode is on this removable paper tab. So there's the um, that sticker is now gone. The exterior of your hoop is nice and clean. But as you can see, the they have rebranded under the Colonial label. They are the same exact hoops, literally same exact hoops, same SKU number, everything is exactly the same. They just now um, say Colonial instead of F.A. Edmonds. It's the same exact hoop. So in case um, I'm updating the website, now that they have switched over all of the packaging, um, I will be updating it. It will now say Colonial instead of F.A. Edmonds, but don't panic, they are the same, same, same exact hoops, just under a new name. So we've got, um, that's what's in here. And then this box down here that's too heavy for me to list, lift um, is from Nurge. So I've got a good restock of all of the Nurge hoops. These are the hardwood beach hoops. Um, these are the thicker uh, 16 millimeter hoops. So in case you uh, enjoy stitching with one of these thicker hoops, we've got all of the sizes back in stock. We also have um, the regular eight millimeter uh, width hoops are back, and then um, the ever popular rectangular plastic hoops um, in all the different sizes are back as well. The uh, These hoops are, again, similar to the same thing that's in the Morgan hoops and the Eversone. It has the inner hoop with the channel, the outer hoop with the ridge, so that it helps keep your fabric in place. Um, these rectangular hoops are great for samplers that aren't designed to be round. A lot of the drop cloth samplers are rectangles, um, squares, and so they actually work really well in here because you don't have to move your hoop around. You can fit the entire design inside of these hoops. Um, so that's what is in this box down here is a nice good restock from Nurge. Uh, let's take a look at this one here. Down here, we've got a restock from Corinne Lapierre. Uh, these are wood felt embroidery kits. They include everything you need to make um, all of the little designs. I have made the, um, the knitting cat uh, one, and this was a lot of fun to do. They have The instructions are very, very clear. They give you all of the pattern pieces. I had more than enough supplies um, in here to make the cat, including the fluffy stuffing inside. These are um, lavender houses, and so this whole box smells amazing because I can smell all the lavender. They give you the lavender. Um, it's inside this box. So all of her kits, which um, have been popular for a really long time, are back in stock. They're especially popular at this time of year because she has several um, ornament kits. So if you like making holiday ornaments, um, you participate in holiday ornament exchanges, and you're starting to think about those projects, take a look at the Corinne Lapierre kits um, because several of her kits, uh, they include even like the string to turn um, your finished project into an ornament. Um, so there's lots and lots of um, unique, kind of fun and quick to do ornament projects um, in this line of kits. So that is what is over in those boxes over there. And then in this final box down here, We've got the rest of my Hawthorne handmade order um, that got split up. Uh, so these are a relatively new uh, addition to um, Snuggly Monkey. 
I added these in August um, and they are very popular, or maybe it was July. Um, so this is their, um, I think it's called Crafty Cats, yes. Um, this is one of their embroidery kits, and their kits are complete kits. They include everything. The pre-printed sampler is in here, the hoop, the thread, the needles, um, and then an instruction card is in here. Um, and then they also have a line of wood felt uh, embroidery kits as well. This is the Wren, which um, has been very popular. And again, <coughs> complete kits. The only thing that's not included is a pair of scissors. Um, but it even has the brooch back if you want to turn these into little brooches. Um, this is one of their mini embroidery kits called Celestial Deer. Um, and this kit actually, there is a four inch hoop inside of this box. So again, it includes everything except the scissors, the needle, the thread, the pre-printed um, fabric. Um, all of it is um, inside of this box. So um, this is, I had two boxes of Hawthorne Handmade um, kits. One arrived last week, the second one showed up um, this week, so we're excited to have all of those back in stock. So there you go. <laughs> I feel like the Micro Machine Man, like I just talked a whole ton really, really fast. Um, uh, like I said, lots and lots of uh, restock is happening this month, so if you've signed up for any of those notify me when back in stock emails, um, you should be receiving those as stuff is coming in. If there is something that's out of stock on the website, um, signing up for that notify me when available is the best way to find out as soon as it comes back. Those are automated messages. You're not signing up for a newsletter or anything. It is a one-time email. Um, as soon as that item is hits um, the shop, you get an email letting you know, yay, it's back in stock. Um, and then you can head over and purchase it. So that's the easiest way um, to find out. Yay, will you be doing anything with origami Christmas ornaments? Um, I don't have any plans for origami Christmas ornaments at the moment. Um, that's, a, that's a great idea though. Um, I do have some origami paper, um, but it's something that I can definitely look into. Thank you for that suggestion, Nancy. I appreciate it very, very much. Um, there are, I do have more um, holiday and Christmas stuff that is coming. Um, there's actually two of them that are in these boxes um, that I haven't shown you because I didn't want to show stuff that isn't listed on the website yet, but um, keep an eye out. A lot of the holiday stuff is arriving already um, and I'll be getting that listed. Um, we have this little counter um, at my house and it let me know that there's 109 days left <laughs> before Christmas. Um, so the holidays are definitely coming. And those of us that like to do a lot of handmade things for the holidays, we're definitely starting to think about all of those projects that we have coming in the next couple of months. Um, all right, so there you go. That is uh, this week's combination of a what's new and unboxing. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, we've got an open studio coming up uh, next weekend on September the um, 16th. Um, and all of the dates for the fall open studios are up on the website, um, so you can take a look at them if you're gonna be down in the Durham area during any of those, we'd love to see you. Um, and as always, you can always schedule a private shopping appointment as well um, in between open studios if you wanted to come and shop in person. So excited for the holiday stuff. Me too. There is so much fun stuff on its way. Um, stuff from Corinne LaPierre um, is here. Some stuff from um, Hawthorne Handmade um, is here. Uh, Kylie and the Machine has some really fun um, holiday stuff that should be here in October um, that is different from the um, countdown calendars they've had in the past. Um, yeah, so there's lots of a really fun holiday stuff that's on its way. All right, everybody, have a fantastic week, um, and I will probably see you again next week with another unboxing. All right, talk to you soon. Bye.